Hey, hello. You're stuck in traffic with Wolf Gorlick, or Karked, as the case may be. Uh, so this is a couple minute riff on IT security. One of the things I was uh, thinking about was uh, thumbprints, right? Thumbprints. When I moved into a data center, was it 2005-ish? They installed thumbprint verification to get in, and it worked great. We're, but we're up in Michigan, right? So uh, Michigan, the weather varies. So in the summer, it worked absolutely fantastic. In the winter, when people's hands started to dry out and whatnot, suddenly the uh, the scanners won't recognize you. So we actually had to uh, calibrate them. And by calibrate, I mean uh, reduce the crossover error rate. So false positives, false negatives, crossover error rate. Reduce the crossover error rate such that it was more tolerant between wintertime and summertime. When that happened, that meant it was more tolerant of differences in the fingerprints, as you might imagine. And when that happened, that's when the gummy bear trick worked, right? So you could take a gummy bear, do the thumbprint, and uh, log in. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And uh, my my belief in that security just went... Um, this was the same place that... Uh, one time we ended up all leaving and walked outside to look at something and then realized everyone left their keys and everything in the in the car. And so walked back in and the guy's like, I can't get in. Nah, nah, nah. And I just screwed over. In. Life is good. Kind of freaked him out. Uh, kind of bad reputation between gummy bears and screwdrivers. Come on. So the thing about passwords, uh, thumbprints, Terrible passwords. Everyone loves biometrics, but they're terrible passwords because you got to calibrate them. Uh, they've got to be able to, you know, change, accommodate for difference in the in the pressure and whatnot. If you think about like partial prints from the FBI, um, that works. Why? Because you can recognize a partial, uh, not the full print. So that means like part of it has to go through. So think about what that means from like a password perspective. That'd be like, oh, if I could type in. Uh, half of my password and log in, life is good. It's the same type of thing, right? You're lowering the complexity so that it can accept a half or a third of the password and sort of look like it and still get in. Now, so one, not a very good mechanism. Two, another concern is um, obviously if you lose <laughs> your fingerprints, like what happened to the OPM breach or whatnot, uh, or if your fingerprints are stolen, uh, also, there was some recent research I thought was pretty cool, came out of Germany, uh, that a guy could take high-resolution photos from a distance and reverse engineer people's fingerprints and then print them and then log into phones. Awesome. So if your fingerprints get compromised, once they're compromised, you can't change your fingerprints, right? As we know, it just like, can't rotate passwords. Or you can rotate passwords, rather, but you can't change your fingerprints. So uh, issue one, it's like typing in a partial password and logging in. Issue two, if it gets lost... Uh, it can't be recovered. Issue three, kind of interesting to me, thinking about tokenization and hashing and crypto and all the things I look at uh, on a regular basis in terms of managing uh, encryption, <clears throat> is, pause for just a minute, you, it will accept a partial? How can it accept a partial if it's not storing the value in the database to compare against, right? Can't do that with a password. The reason is, you don't hash a fingerprint. You hash a password, which is one way, re non-reversible. You don't hash a fingerprint because of something called the avalanche effect. The avalanche effect is little changes in the data, right, make big changes in the hashing algorithm. That's intentional, uh, it's by design, it's intended so that, you know, you can clearly see there's been a change. Uh, check out the talk I did with uh, Mo at Gurkhan for a little bit more about that. But uh, the bottom line is that avalanche effect kicks in. And what that means is if you did have a little bit of difference in the finger, if it was a little bit different between summer and winter, if it was put on a slightly different angle, the avalanche effect would take effect and the hash would be markedly different. So they don't hash fingerprints, they encrypt fingerprints, uh, which means the encryption of that fingerprint is reliant upon keys. And what's our favorite ways to break crypto? Break the keys, steal the keys, get in, uh, because admins leave them everywhere and they think that they're encrypted and we're all safe. So to recap, I don't like fingerprints as passwords. Uh, if you are using them, you might check your key management, you might check your crossover error rate, you might check all these various attacks that are in play, and then weep. <laughs> Have a good one.